Hello and welcome to day 100 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. You can also call me Mike. And the study that we are doing today is by Arthur Parton and is called A Stream Through the Meadow. Well, folks, we made it 100 days. Um, it was a lot of work. I started this project back in December of last year. Uh, conceiving of it and starting to select work and uh, I did a lot of spent a lot of months painting and um, and then uh, quite a lot of time uh, you know with my other work getting things prepared for this uh, this series of blog posts and videos and if you've um, been there along with me for even part of the journey I thank you and uh, don't worry I'm going to uh, rearrange my schedule so it's basically just going to be one post a week but we'll be um, starting to work on my own stuff my own paintings and uh, I won't be making those blog posts a bit more extensive than uh, what I've done here since I've had to do this on a daily basis so you know keep tuning in there'll be stuff happening um, I do have some information about our artist today he wasn't super well known but I did find some information on a site called piercegalleries.com and uh, here we go. Arthur Parton. Arthur Parton was born in Hudson, New York, and along with his brothers Ernest and Henry, he wanted to become, oh, by the way, born in 1842, died 1914. Arthur Parton became a prominent 19th century landscape painter after studying with William Trost Richards in Philadelphia and at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, and after a trip to Europe where he was highly influenced by the Barbizon painters. His view of the Shenandoah River was published in Bryant's Picture Rests America, and that publication gave him instantaneous recognition. During the reign of the Hudson River School, Parton became an associate of the National Academy of Design and a full National Academian. He was a leading member of the American Watercolor Society and the Artists Fund Society. He exhibited at the National Academy, winning a prize at the NAD in 1896. Um, more awards, more awards, more awards. Parton painted throughout New York State and is known for his paintings of the Catskill and Andreoc Mountains. He was a well-known artist and a well-liked, having exhibited for over half a century at the National Academy and moving from a tight academic Hudson River School palette into Impressionism, and I would argue this painting we're doing today is far more tonalist, um, but that's a story for another time. Um, from 1874 to 1893, he maintained a 10th Street studio at 51 West 10th Street alongside William Merritt Chase in New York City, and he probably was highly influenced by Chase's Impressionist cabin canvases. Now, we have just a minute left here to say, you know, Impressionism has sort of won the day, and a lot of it has to do with the resurgence of French Impressionism, and I was there for that in the 80s when I was working at various... Um, uh, establishments that sold posters and things like that uh, when I was in my 20s and um, I saw it coming back. Tonalism hasn't made the same comeback but tonalism actually totally beat out Impressionism back at the time that this guy was alive and was the predominant mode for just about 40 years. Um, it just deserves to be said. Well I can see we're coming to the end of this post. Thanks for joining me for day 100 and if you've been with me through the entire series I say again even if we're a part of it, thank you so much for your time and attention. Uh, you can see more of my own tonalist work at landscapepainter.co.nz, and uh, we'll see you in about a week. So meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.